Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. We're going to do one more video on this uh, Galaxy Watch here. By the way, I hadn't noticed that. Look at that watch face. As you move, it gives a little sheen to it that's artificial. It's part of the design. I love it. Anyway, this is the Galaxy Watch and it operates according to the Tyson operating system. Even though I have it set for watch always on, it's timing out on me. Right here in the middle, this is a pure Android smartwatch. It's represented in its class by the ZGPAX S216, which is similar in size to um, the Galaxy Watch. And then there's the Android Wear line of watches. Notice this one won't lay down, it has to stand up. Uh, which is represented here by the TicWatch Pro. And they all operate differently. So I wanted to give you a quick, like a right brain overview of how these things run so you can decide what would work best with your mode of operation. What, what do you feel most comfortable with? I'm going to jump in on Android because I'm much more familiar with that than anything else. This channel, smartwatchticks.com, you could go to it. We review lots and lots and lots of these Android watches. This particular one has a front-facing camera. You can do selfies, FaceTime, uh, all of the kind of things you want to do with a camera with apps that are standard Android apps on this. I'm pretty much sold on Android watches. I think they're great. The way they work, you start from the watch face and then you do swipes, right? When you swipe down like this, you pull down a shade that shows you this page that has a lot of things that you can touch to turn on and off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, to change your brightness, to set it to twist your wrist, to uh, show you the time if you want to. There, I just changed the brightness so you can see it easier. Cellular connectivity. This is GPS. You can turn that off if you're not going to be using it for location. It has GPS all built into it. And if you slide to the left, you get this kind of an indicator that gives you date and time and whether you got a SIM card and your battery charge. And if you slide it to the right, you get pedometer steps. And sometimes if you keep sliding, you'll get weather or some other things depending on the watch. But basically, this upper row has these characteristics on it. From the middle row now, where the watch face is, you slide over here, you get notifications. You slide over here, you get to something called the app drawer. This is where all of your applications, and these are standard Android apps. Some of them come stock, and some of them you can install on your own. And you can put in lots and lots and lots of them in here. Yeah, like for example, Koi Free is a Koi Pond app that you can download, right? Onto your phone, onto any watch, whatever, that's an Android watch, and you can play with little koi fish and scare them around. Just as an example, you can press the button to go back. Oftentimes you can just slide to go back. So that's the second one. You go over to the right after this. Here we have a music player. And if you go again, sometimes you have weather if that's where they want to put it or other, other things. But typically this middle row will have notifications to the left of the watch faces, the app drawer to the right. When you swipe up, you could have a variety of things. Fitness, or in this case, we have weather. And it's going to show you location at the top and uh, different ways of portraying it. In this case, on this watch, we have both centigrade and Fahrenheit with the highs and lows of the day. And that was from swiping up. So, similar pattern for all of these Android-based watches. Now, contrast that with the Galaxy Watch. We have two buttons on here instead of one. Sometimes these Androids have two or three, um, but they all kind of have the same general layout. Here, when I swipe down, I get another page similar to what I got here, but a little bit different. Well, it's not gonna stay up. We've got a variety of icons, including like a power saving thing, airplane mode, your phone calls, if you have, uh, have received any. This is like a do not disturb. Here is uh, something, I'm not sure. I still couldn't figure that one out. Looks like a clock that might be putting it into a sleep mode or something. Here's your overall brightness. And I think we're a little bright, so I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit. Theater mode, so it turns everything off if you go to the movie theaters. And a shortcut to go to settings, where you can set up all of your different settings. Uh, when you scroll, and that's it. You can't go to the left or the right. So 
on the Galaxy Watch, you one-time slide from anywhere, and you're going to get into all of these things. I don't know why it's stuck on brightness. I'm going to come out of there, get back to the watch face. There. That's what it should be. For some reason, it was stuck there. So the operation is from the watch face down, get you that page, nothing to the left and right. If you go to the right, you're going to be getting uh, your notifications. In this case, we didn't have any. Here's an email that came in, I guess, on Sounds True. Okay. And you'd have more if you scrolled on here. When you scroll to the right, now we get a bunch of widgets. We don't get the app drawer like we had before. We get installed widgets. And notice the dots at the top. All these are little dots notifying you of all the different widgets. So we have a different kind of an implementation of interface here on the, um, the Galaxy Watch. And what's this? Oh, news, I guess. Less competitive housing market, so forth. Um, music player is all here. All of this stuff is showing up parallel to the watch face. Widgets. Okay, and this is apps in a most recently used apps, and you could press that center button to go into the overall apps, but I'll show you a different way. All right, there we go. So down is that, nothing, nothing. Left is notifications, and right is a whole bunch of other stuff, and up, and up, and up doesn't work. There it goes, okay. It, it goes into a fitness thing, it looks like. Um, which is a summary of all of the fitness that you've done. Oops, I just pulled down on the tab from above. There I am there. If I come all the way up, it's not going anywhere. I'm thinking that doesn't, I must have accidentally hit something because normally, well, if you hit it just right, yeah, it goes down into there. Sorry, I keep drifting off screen. And then to there and no way back out of here other than back. A little odd. All right, so there's a swipe up that sometimes catches and takes you into health information, but you can't swipe down from that to get back. You have to hit the back button. Back button and home button are on here, and when you hit this side button, that's when you get into all of your apps. So on this one, we got into the apps simply by swiping right, and they all show up in an arc or a matrix, you can kind of change it, but you can't put it in a circle on this one. Although some Android watches you can. I know it's getting confusing. But on the Galaxy Watch, you have this circle thing. And also, you know, all of the stuff I'm doing with swiping, I'm emulating what I'm doing with swiping over here. This watch, unlike all these other ones, has this rotating bezel. And you can literally navigate all around once you're in a place with the bezel. If I'm back here to the watch screen, I can note I can rotate around at this level and go through all the way over to um, all of these different activities as well. Okay, that's using the rotation of the of the ring around the watch. If I scroll down, the ring doesn't do anything. If I scroll up, and I get into the fitness. Scrolling will guide you through here. I mean, twirling, which is similar to scrolling with the finger. Okay, so when you're in the app drawer, like I said, you have all these apps, you press the button again, it'll take you back to the watch face. And that's the basic operation of the Galaxy Watch. Android Wear now, at least as implemented on the Tick Watch Pro, is way different. You have your watch face. This has got that ambient mode so that uh, when it the other ones normally go into off mode, they're off like that, and they'll time out from the watch face into blackness. Both of these will. This will go into an ambient mode that shows you a small representation of the time that's unique to each watch face. Here's the actual watch face. Now, here we go. When we It's really fast, too. When we slide down... It asks me to put in my PIN code to unlock it. Now it's unlocked. If I swipe again, I'm into all of the same kind of things. Your battery power, the date. Here's uh, brightness level. I think we need to dim this one down a little bit too, so it's not too bright. There we go. And it'll bounce out of that and come back to us. In six minutes, it's Penny's birthday. Aw, that's great. 
You ever have a watch that tells you right to the minute when somebody was born? <laughs> okay, do not disturb. Here's a shortcut to settings that you have on this one. And if you swipe up, you're getting into your um, notifications like the one we just got. Now, here's where it gets odd. If I go to the left, I go to other watch faces. If I go to the right, I go to other watch faces. And, and, and that's how you change different watch faces. What? He didn't talk about that on these watches. That's because to change watch faces on an Android watch, you press and hold, and then you slide through to pick the watch face that you want. Really? On a uh, Galaxy watch, you simply press and hold, and you switch over to the watch face that you want. Huh, that's how they work on these two, but not on this one. So if you've gotten used to this, and you're used to sliding to go over to your notifications, and then go over to either all of these widgets, or to your app drawer, well, you're gonna be constantly surprised as you slide, and it just changes watch faces. Not cool. Um, totally different way of operating. So if you have multiple watches, you're going to be confused, at least with the Tick Watch Pro. I'm not sure if Android Wear does exactly the same thing when you swipe on any of the other Wear watches, but the Tyson version and the Android version all operate similarly as far as that horizontal scrolling goes. Okay, I got to unlock again here. And when I swipe up, I got my notifications. When I swipe left and right, I get my watch faces. Oh, this was kind of a fun one I downloaded. It's a uh, slow coming up, but it's a graphical one. Ah, anyway, when I push the button here, that's when I get to my uh, app drawer. On this one, when I'm at the watch face and I press the bottom one, that's how I get to my uh, app drawer. This one, it's the top button that gets me to my app drawer eventually after I put in my password. Ah, yes, I love it. That's because of Google Pay. You have to have a password in here. Same thing's going to apply if you do Samsung Pay in here. You don't have to worry about that because you don't have any NFC or Android or Google or Samsung or Apple Pay on an Android watch at this time. If you want to do that payment kind of stuff, you're not going to be able to do it from the Android watch, but you can from both of these or the Apple watch. That's a quick overview just to give you an idea of how these things operate differently with a different operating system that comes installed on them. And there's a few different flavors of Android 5.1, actually 4.4, 5.16, 7, 7.1.1. They're all working pretty much similar. Um, this again is a modified version of Android Wear, as I understand, made for the Tick Watch, and this is a Tyson operating system. They each have their own Play Stores for downloading apps. The Android one, you can get any Android app that you can put on your phone. You can try it on the watch, and most of them will work. You're restricted to just the apps designed for the, the Samsung environment uh, to work on um, this particular watch, and, and Google uh, has restricted the number of apps, but they're really honed in and modified to work well in a watch environment for the... Um, the Android Wear. By the way, this bezel does not turn. This one doesn't even have a bezel. It's only on this watch that you have that rotating bezel thing. Okay, enough of all that. We're done with this topic for a while. If you got any questions, put them in the show notes. Hopefully somebody out there that's familiar with these can answer them. I'll do my best here, or we'll send you over to the Pro Boards forum, which has a bunch of technical experts that work with Android watches all the time. You've been watching Smartwatch Ticks, and if you're interested in any of these, check in the show notes. I have buying links uh, to each of our sponsors for these watches, and sometimes good coupon discounts. I know we got a special going on on this one. Um, so check it out in the show notes and use our links if you can. It helps us out here. Uh, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. That helps get the videos out for others to see, and we will see you back here real soon. Thanks for watching.